Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a video on how to solve clock problems from section 1.2 of your book, Geometry for Enjoyment and Challenge. What I'd like you to do is copy the following examples into your notebook, including all diagrams. These are not in your packet. There are other problems pertaining to clocks in your packet, but these are not them. So I'd like you to copy these into your notebook. There might be a notebook check tomorrow. Find the measure of the angle formed by the hands of a clock at the specified time. Assume all angles are less than or equal to 180 degrees. Well, before we get started, there's a few facts that you need to know. And you might know them already, but we have to review them nonetheless. The first fact is that a circle has 360 degrees. The second fact is that a clock is divided into 12 equal sections. The third fact is that because of facts 1 and 2, if you take the 360 degrees in a circle and you divide it by 12, 360 divided by 12, each section of the clock is 30 degrees. And that's very important to know. Each section of the clock is 30 degrees. All right, I think I've made that pretty clear. So for question number one, they want us to find the, the uh, measure of the angle formed by the hands of the clock at one o'clock. So the first three are very easy and it's gonna break you in nice and slow. So what I'm gonna do is try to draw as quickly as I can a clock or as much of the clock as I need. You know, for some of these, I'm not gonna need to do all 12 numbers. So I'm just gonna do pretty much what I need, maybe a little bit more to answer the question. So this is 12. Okay, so hopefully you all know how to tell time. At one o'clock, the little hand is facing the one, and the big hand is facing the 12. Now what I might suggest that you do is take the short, the short hand and it just extend it all the way to one, maybe with a dotted line. So my question to you would be, how many sections of the clock is this? And the answer is that this is just one section of the clock. And we said a moment ago that each section has 30 degrees, so the answer to this first question is 30 degrees. Okay, let's go to number two. Find the measure of the angle formed by the hands of the clock at seven o'clock. So let's start by drawing in the features of the clock. Okay, at seven o'clock, the little hand is facing the seven. The big hand is facing the 12. And again, using the teaching tip in question number one, you might wanna take the little hand and extend it with a dotted line. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to partition all the sections off between the 12 and the seven or between the seven and the 12. So I'm gonna start at the center and I'm gonna partition off from the center to eight, from the center to nine, from the center to 10, and from the center to 11. So this shows me very clearly how many sections I've used up. So here is one full section Here's two full sections, three, four, five full sections. So we've got five sections. Each section is 30 degrees. So this is gonna suggest the multiplication problem five times 30. And of course, five times 30 is 150. So the answer to question number two is 150 degrees. And if you just look at that angle, that makes sense. A 180 degree angle is a straight angle. And this is just shy of being a straight angle. In fact, it's just shy of being a straight angle by 30 degrees. Let's do the last of the easy questions. The last one is three o'clock. Let's start by drawing in the features of the clock. Okay, at three o'clock, the little hand is facing the three and the big hand is facing the 12. The teaching tip was to extend the little hand with a dotted line. And then the teaching tip that we picked up in number two, question number two, was to partition off all of the sections inside of the angle. So I'm gonna go from the center up to one, and from the center up to two. I kind of missed two a little bit, but you get the idea. And now we can identify how many sections we are covering in this angle. We've got one section here, another one here, and a third one here. So we have three sections, and each section is 30 degrees which suggests a multiplication problem of three times 30, which of course is 90 degrees. Now 90 degrees is a right angle. And if you actually look at this, this angle here in green, it certainly looks like a right angle. So I hope this first slide did not present you with anything too challenging. It's gonna change though in the next slide, so get ready. 
Okay, so the first three problems were pretty straightforward and pretty basic. The next two get a little bit more challenging because it's not a, an even amount of time. It's not on the hour, so to speak. In number four, we're talking about 3.30, and then number five, we're talking about 7.30. So there are ways to reason this out. If you're a parent or a tutor watching this video, I realize that there is more than one way of doing this. But having taught this for many years, many of my students have found this formula that I've written on here helpful. So this is the way that I'm going to teach it, but if you're helping your child with these problems, just know that there is more than one way to do this. So the formula that I like to use with my students is that to find the angle measure, we're going to find what's called the child's angle, and I'll explain to you what that is when we do the problem, plus or minus, you've got to decide whether you're going to add or subtract the minutes divided by 60 times 30. It seems a little complicated at first, but after you do a couple of samples, then you'll get the hang of it and it won't be so bad. The first thing that I'm going to do for number 4, 3.30, is draw the features of the clock. Okay, so now we've got to talk about what this child's angle is. I want you to imagine that you're a 4 or 5 year old that's just learned how to tell the time using an analog clock like this. If it's 3.30, that 5 year old probably knows that the big hand is facing the 6. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. So I started with the big hand this time, which is unlike what I did for the first three examples, but that's just what I'm choosing to do. Now we know as adults or as teenagers that at 3.30 the little hand is not facing the 3. It's moved on. But the 5-year-old probably doesn't make that connection. Maybe he or she does, but we're going to assume that they don't. So I'm going to put the little hand directly facing the 3. So this is the child's angle. So I'm going to write that down. We've got three sections of the clock. 3 times 30 is 90, so the child's angle is 90. Now, the reality of the situation is that as we got older, we realized that that little hand really isn't facing the 3 at 3.30. It really has moved between the 3 and the 4. So in the reality, the little hand looks more like this. So the real angle is between this red little hand and the big hand is still facing toward the 6. So in reality, has the child's angle gotten smaller or has it gotten larger? Remember, the original angle was green and the new actual angle is red. And that new angle, the red angle, is smaller than the green angle. So if we started 90 and we want to get smaller, it's going to mean that we have to subtract. This symbol here means to pick one or the other, plus or minus. In this case, we're going to subtract. Now the minutes comes from just looking at the end of the time. So the amount of minutes added on to 3 o'clock is 30. So I'm going to put 30 divided by 60, and I'm going to figure out what that is, and then I'm going to multiply it by 30. This 30 here represents one section of the clock. And this fraction here tells us what fractional portion of the section has that little hand actually advanced. It's confusing, I know, no doubt about it. If you're feeling confused and overwhelmed, every year students are. So the 90 is just gonna come on down again. We're gonna put the minus sign. 30 over 60 is a half. And again, this little hand is halfway between the three and the four, so hopefully that makes a little sense. And half of what? Well, it's half of a full section, and a section is 30 degrees. So continuing on, we're gonna write the 90 again minus again, one half of 30 is 15, and 90 minus 15 is 75. So the answer for question number four is 75 degrees. This angle in red is 75 degrees. Now if you're confused, we're gonna, you're gonna get a second opportunity, and not always in life do you get a second chance, so this is your lucky day. Now we're gonna do 730. It's going to be very similar, but hopefully it'll, it'll iron out some of the issues you may have had with number four. So let's set up the parameters of the clock. Okay, at 7.30, the big hand is facing the six. I stalled a little bit there so you would actually have a moment to think about it yourself. Now, according to the child, according to the five-year-old, where is the little hand facing at 7.30? Remember, you're only four or five years old. And that four or five year old is probably thinks that it's facing directly towards the seven. And this represents just one section of the clock. So right now, the child's angle is 30. 
Okay, now let's let's advance to our teenage years or our adult years or when we can really look at a, a clock in Nome. The reality of the matter is at 7.30, the big hand is facing the six, but the little hand has advanced. It's not facing the seven anymore, it's moved on. So the question is, did the green angle, which was the original angle, did it get bigger or did it get smaller when reality set in? The answer is that it got bigger. It got a little bit bigger, which means we're going to use what operation here, plus or minus? If you said plus, you're correct because it's going to get a little bit bigger. Now we get this, the minutes, this part of the formula comes from the extension of our time, whatever. If this were 15 minutes, it would be 15 over 60. If it were 40 minutes, it would be 40 over 60. So for this particular problem, it's going to be 30 over 60 times 30. I'm going to write the 30 again. I'm going to write the plus again. 30 over 60 reduces to 1 half, and 30 is the section of the clock. Okay, let's finish this up. I'm writing the 30 again. 1 half of 30 is 15. 30 plus 15 is 45. And the final answer for this problem is 45 degrees. And it's always good for, as a final check just to actually look at the clock and ask yourself, does that look like a 45 degree angle? And it does. It looks like it's half of 90 degrees. Remember, a 90 degree angle would look like this. And that red angle looks like it's half of that brown angle that I just drew in. So that's a very reasonable answer. I hope it's making more sense. There are a couple more examples, so hang in there.